So hello everyone, welcome to the sixth Microsoft Meta for Guwahati Group. Uh, today, topic for our meetup is AWS CloudWatch integration with Mule Log, uh, Mule for logging, and our speaker is Santosh Hazari. So Santosh, uh, can you go to the next slide, please? So the organizer for this meetup are uh, me, myself, Abhishek, and Vaishnavi. So Vaishnavi has joined uh, the Guwahati Meetup Group recently as a host. So welcome, Vaishnavi. And congratulations on your first meetup as a host. So, would you like to introduce yourself? Would you like to go first? Yeah. Uh, I'm Vaishnavi, and uh, this is my first meetup uh, as a co host for Gahati. Uh, yep. Yep. Something about yourself? Yeah. So, I'm working uh, as a senior lead engineer uh, at Episero. And uh, it's been uh, like uh, I have an experience of around four uh, plus years of experience where uh, I worked uh, two years for Tipco and two plus years in uh, MuleSoft. Yeah. Thank you, Vishnu. That's about Thank you for introduction. Uh, so, hi everyone. Hi, this is Abhishek. Uh, so, I'm working as an associate solution architect in Akisero. Uh, I'm a MuleSoft ambassador. I have over a lot of six plus years of experience and four plus in uh, MuleSoft. Uh, I'm a certified developer and architect, and I'm leader for uh, Lucknow and Kohati Meetup. So that's all about myself. Uh, and uh, next, we'll go with our speaker, Santosh Hazari. And first of all, thank you, Santosh, for uh, like taking it up and uh, like uh, taking this opportunity to be a speaker. And congratulations for your first meetup as a speaker, and all the best. So would you like to introduce yourself? Just you need to unmute like uh, you are on mute. Yep. Yeah, I'm out of it. Yeah. OK. Uh, hi, I'm Santosh Azari. I'm working with Episero since more than a year now. Uh, total experience is 4 plus in integration and uh, development. Uh, currently, uh, lead engineer at Episero, and I'm a certified mules of developer. Uh, expertise include logging, any point monitoring, and uh, development Im implementation of bad jobs and uh, solutions end to end with the res respect to legacy systems or APS as well. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Shantos. And again, thank you so much for taking up your uh, Guwahati meetup and being a speaker over here. So now some safe no. harbor statement. Uh, so both the speaker and the host are organizing this meetup in individual capacity only. We are not representing our company here. This presentation is strictly for learning purpose. Uh, organizer or uh, presenter do not hold any responsibility that same solution will work for your business requirement. This presentation is not, uh, not meant for any promotional activities. Okay, next, uh, let us go with the some housekeeping. So the recording of this meetup will be shared in the meetup page within 24 hours. And in the chat, I will share you the link for the meetup page where you can see the previous meetups also and what are the upcoming meetups. So you will get everything in the meetup page. Please feel free to put your questions in the chat and we'll try to uh, answer all the questions. Uh, you can you can put it on chat or if you need mic access, you can let me know. I can give you mic access also so to make it more interactive. The last one and the favorite one which I have is the feedback. So we are requesting you to please, please, please give your feedback. So once the meetup is over, you will get a feedback form. So please fill out the feedback and let us know like uh, your suggestions, like what is the next topic you want in our meetup and uh, what more improvement you want if there is a need for both the speaker and the organizer. So that will help us to improve our meetups for the next time. So. That's all about the introduction, the save harbor, and uh, housekeeping. So, all over to you, Santosh. Okay, uh, I'll start with my presentation and demo as well at the end. Uh, starting up, we have an agenda which is introduction, need for externalized logging, and configurations needed in the Mule to externalize the logs, appenders, and the hierarchy as well. So, uh, in Mule, we follow a logging hierarchy which is uh, warning, debug, info level, uh, and trace, and there is error as well. So I'll explain you one by one. So this is the first, that's the introduction. Why, uh, I mean, why Mule had the logging and uh, there's a, there are many reasons. So 
blogging is specifically for analytics uh, i mean uh, elastic splunk and maybe debugging as well so uh, next slide is basically the context but uh, centralized logging management and analytics solutions such as splunk elastic and more popular as a way to monitor applications and environments usually when you uh, implement apis you have the log statements that will tell you uh, what current situation is at the implementation and, and what the flow ended and started so there are some best practices as well uh, second pointer is uh, failure can be detected and uh, so this, this this is this point this is basically means that debugging of the application during the uh, before uh, during the development and implementation post deployments you have runtime logs which will tell you the current scenario or current status of the apis uh, third is usually you create custom graphs for monitoring status uh, we do have any point monitoring from log as well you can pull out some data and have some uh, graphs representing your data uh, logging uh, framework approaches okay uh, there are two things, so feed and pull. The feed is when you send your logs to any other external systems. The pull is basically when you pull it from uh, any point APIs that is Cloud Hub. So over here, uh, AWS CloudWatch that uh, we have demo today will be feed. That is, uh, we are sending log events to AWS CloudWatch. Uh, why there is a need to externalize logs? Uh, basically, is first is retention, although uh, we have in Cloud Hub or any point that is 30 day or up to 100 MB. Uh, that's for Titan. I mean, then for the subscription, have up to one GB. But there are sometimes when you need logs for more than a uh, not just space, but maybe a year or so. Maybe financial transactions represent some logs over there. Uh, to visualize, obviously, uh, to create some graphs. Okay, alerting in in case of any errors or specific uh, pattern has occurred on the logging, you need to alert them with by creating some alerts on it on this. Uh, correlating and cross reference. This is the point where. Uh, Basically, you don't have just one system calling your any point. There are multiple uh, systems which will be calling your any point APIs. So uh, to have the reference or to have some uh, complete logging in just one tool, uh, that's what uh, one stop shop or you can say cross referencing that strike from the start to end. So correlation between other systems and then any point as well, you, you, you usually prefer uh, more better systems uh, for the logging itself. Okay, configurations. Uh, Usually you do configurations in log4j2, that is to, in the POM, you have to add dependencies and then appenders, layout, appender, reference, filter. Uh, these will be in the log4j2 file. We'll go through each one of them in detail when we have the uh, demo. Okay, uh, appenders, these are the most important when you send out logs to external destinations. So by default, we have rolling file appender, but uh, we have multiple types. So there can be file appender, there is SMTP, is GMS that is it is queue based appender JDBC that is the database when you want to send logs to database and soft it as well. So up to business scenario where you use but these are just list of types of appenders we have. You can also create your custom appender as well. So uh, if you wish to have uh, so currently what I have CloudWatch appender is the custom created one. Okay, uh, the last slide uh, logging hierarchy. Now, uh, usually you follow a hierarchy. You just don't want to see the debug or trace level logs in your uh, runtime or in your uh, production deployment. So you follow a hierarchy, which is just error and warning will be displayed in your uh, logging by logging that uh, events. So this is log logging hierarchy. This is from left to right and not from top to bottom. So if you set your level to error, only error level logs, logs will be set. If you set to info, it will show up error warning and info level. The level can be set in your loggers, which are on uh, Studio during the deployment, during the development. Uh, trace is the topmost, which is uh, if you set it to trace, uh, you will have your error warning info debug and trace. Okay. Uh, we'll be jumping on to demo. Just uh, Santosh, before we jump to demo, we have one question from Ajay who asking what is meant by externalized logging? Okay. Okay. So, uh, Externalize as in uh, currently when you uh, deploy your application, right? So you have application level logs, and then when you create your application via APIs, you have runtime logs. These will be in your any point platform. Uh, I'll, I'll show you in the endpoint perspective as well. But so, uh, usually, yeah. So Ajay, basically, what happened like when we uh, don't use the logging strategy which is provided by any point platform, but we are using any third party tool like Splunk or. Uh, CloudWatch. So that is means we are externalizing the logging system. We are using another tool for that one. Correct, Santosh? Yeah, right. Yeah. So that's what externalizing logging means. 
Yeah, carry on, Santosh. Okay, I'll, I'll start with demo. Uh, it'll be a quick one. So I already have one uh, flow. Uh, it's a simple flow. I'm just uh, having a listener uh, setting up the properties and then few loggers as well. So these are different types of loggers. The one is uh, set to info, which says message as info level. Uh, the other one is error and the error level and so on. So warning and then debug as well. So yeah. And then at the end, I'm setting payload just to success. Okay, that's a, a constant string. Uh, for CloudWatch, okay, for CloudWatch, we need to have your uh, log4g2 file. You need to add some configurations over here. Uh, I'll show you. So I have the configurations with me. So first is the appender. So by default, this file, uh, I'll explain in detail what, what exactly it says. So if you create a new application, this will be a default file. And uh, by default, there is a configuration, and these dependencies are added at the runtime. Uh, currently, there are no dependencies uh, for these any of the uh, statements because this is default. Uh, the rolling file is the default appender, which says like uh, this is this is the appender which will be storing your file in your local systems. So uh, this is the path of the file, and uh, this says like cloud up meetup dot log that will be the file in uh, your local system. Uh, pattern is again uh, the important. So basically, when you externalize the log, there might not be the same pattern which is text plain over here. It might be some JSON, HTML, XML. So you need to have your uh, pattern layout as well to tell them. Uh, second, these are specific to appenders. Okay, size based trigger policy and default role rollover. Uh, I'll paste just my CloudWatch as well. Okay, so I have added my appender, which is the CloudWatch appender. I have to name it as a CloudWatch. Okay. Uh, second thing is log group and log string. Uh, dedicated Shantosh, okay, I'll Shantosh, explain you. Let, let us know. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, log group and log stream. I'll explain you on, on during the uh, once the deployment is completed and on the AWS perspective. Uh, there is a dedicated writer which says uh, it's true. So basically, the working is uh, when you deploy your application, uh, your your access key and secret access key will access uh, will have your uh, AW, I mean there are some Java AWS SDKs. Okay, I have not added it yet, but I'll just add it. Okay, so basically these are SDKs which will be accessed in the runtime. One is uh, KD Groggy Logging Framework, which is again using the AWS appenders. The second one is AWS Java SDK logs. So basically when you give your access key and secret access key, which is to access your account, uh, these APIs will be called in runtime and these will be writing your log events from, from your local or from Mule log 4 g 2 to your CloudWatch. Okay, so basically via the appender. Now you can see on the CloudWatch appender, we have a dedicated writer. This means a thread will be created, which will be responsible for just writing. Okay. Uh, the pattern is again up to you. I have kept it as default as of now, but uh, you can have your JSON layout or HTML as per your business requirements. Uh, okay, coming to loggers, these are by default async loggers. Uh, these are for new logging. Uh, this last one is appenders, okay, async root. Uh, these are the appender reference that will be called in the runtime. So currently, by default, we have appender reference file. This will be called in runtime to this appender rolling file, which have the name same as file. So same way, I have to call CloudWatch as well. So I'll just add this one appender reference uh, with the name as CloudWatch. Okay, uh, apart from this, since this is an externalized logging tool, uh, logging uh, configurations, we have to uh, import the dependencies. So I have one more tag for dependencies. These are these are just extracting the uh, KD log 42 dot AWS from the com dot XML and also the default logging up and up. Shantosh, have you seen any questions? Uh, people want you to go a little slow body here going very fast. Go a little slow because uh, when you are switching, so maybe some lag or something so they cannot understand that so can you explain this part again please yep, and sure. let it slow this time okay yeah uh, configuration is the first one is you want me to create a default one again you can create it 
no, you you can just explain like what you did. Like you don't need to create it again. Maybe maybe you can explain like what you done. Okay, so the first thing is I added a configuration which is to import the dependencies from the pom. Uh, second, if you want to actually send logs, you need to have your appenders. So, I mean, currently we have CloudWatch, but if you want Splunk, Splunk I guess works with HTTP appenders. So you need to pass in HTTP appender for that. So this configuration is just for CloudWatch. Uh, the log group and log stream will be uh, will be the place in which uh, your logs will be posted. Okay, the stream will be important one. Uh, in which, I mean, there's a log group in which the log stream will be created, and in log stream you will have your uh, logs. Okay, uh, dedicated writer explained to you this is kind of a, a considered as a thread which is just dedicated to sending your logs from uh, a mule to your uh, cloud watcher any of the appenders you have. Uh, pattern layout. This will be the pattern which will be posted in cloud watch. Okay, uh, apart from appender. Adding the appender, you need to call them in runtime, so you need to add your appender reference, which is uh, appender ref ref equals to CloudWatch. So, for CloudWatch configuration, one is to add your uh, configurations in log4g to file. The second one is pom.xml. Uh, I have already added the dependencies uh, in the previously, so I have added two dependencies, which is uh, log4g to AWS appenders, and second one is uh, AWS Java SDK logs. Uh, this is the configuration needed from your new end. Okay. Apart from this, uh, if I explain, so. Santosh, Santosh, wait, wait. Too much noise from your end, from background. There is noise? Yeah. Yeah, no, Okay, for AWS, uh, this is my trial account. For creating an AWS account, you need to have your credit card details over here. Uh, just be vigilant if you are using any of the AWS resources, and if they cross the trial limit, you might get charged. Okay, so uh, currently, this is the look and feel of AWS. <coughs> the first thing is you need the sorry, <coughs> you need the access key and secret access key ID. Uh, if you go to IAM, which is the service. So this is the identity and access management you need to create access key and secret access key. Uh, if I go to manage access key, I have uh, two access keys. Okay, uh, the secret will be shared when you create a new access key, and uh, that will be shared only once. So if you lost it, you have to delete or make it inactive and then create new. So uh, always make sure to delete your resources or make. Make sure they are not up and running once you are done with the POC or any of the services you are using in AWS. Also, uh, AWS works with uh, most of the services are works with uh, region specific. So IAM is a service for uh, identity and access management. This is global. Over here you can see the global. But if you go to CloudWatch, it says North Virginia, that is uh, US East 1. So, you need to create uh, regions according to this. So basically, when you, uh, I mean, client perspective, when you have your uh, deployments in, in, in any other regions, and then you want to create uh, log group and log stream in different regions, you need to provide the region as well during the configuration. So as of now, I have not shown you where you have to pass access key, secret access, and the region. Uh, this is after you have been uh, completed the, I mean, created the access key, secret access key. And have just created log group. Okay, so it's loading. So currently, I have no log groups. Uh, over here, I'll just create one. Okay, this is under log group. I have to create one more. That is the log stream. And this is the uh, main which you are going to provide in your configurations. So I just copy it and add it. Uh, so this is any point test. And in a log posi, you have two types, which is says log group and log stream. 
uh, you can have your variables as well over here if you want to create it as a runtime. So I created any point test and any point stream. Okay, uh, so the first thing is log for J2 configuration, second is POM, that is to add dependencies. The third one is while you deploy your application in the runtime configurations, you need to submit, I mean, you need to provide your access key and secret access key. So over here, there are three variables, that is access key ID, secret access key, and the region where you have your, uh, where you have your log stream and log group. So basically, when we go to AWS and we create, the, like, we need to create the secret key, uh, like the key and secrets, and we need to define a reason because it works on reason specific. And then all those things, when we are uh, like deploying our API, we can provide that as an argument. We need to provide that as an argument so that we can get, have a connectivity with AWS, and uh, the logging logging may go there in the AWS, and we can see over there. So. Also, uh, like uh, Santosh has already defined, like uh, what modification you need to do in your look for J2 file, and uh, you need to add a dependency basically in your POM so that uh, AWS CloudWatch uh, will be uh, connected with your API, and you can you can share the data over there. You can share the logs basically over there. Ambush, uh, by the time it gets deployed, I have a small question. Uh, so when we are deploying uh, any application in a specific region, like do we have to configure uh, this log, uh, log group and log stream uh, in the same region as well? Uh, yes. Yeah, then only the communication happens. Right, yes, you need to provide the region as well, the cloud uh, access key and secret access key. Uh, that there will be the uh, log group and log stream will be created. So, if I show you the deployment logs, I mean these are the application logs which will be displayed. Uh, over here, it is saying that uh, using existing log group, uh, any point test and any point stream. And uh, this means that connection is established. But if there are any errors, this there will be the error uh, trace. Okay. So this is deployed. I'll try to hit it on my postman. Also, just to show you uh, the one I created in the cloud bots, there are the any point stream. And over here, you can see there are some logs sent in during the deployment. OK, so these are the logs coming from our uh, any point. Now, if I try to hit it again, it says that success. And if I check on my any point studio, there are some logs generated which are runtime. So there is warnings, info, error, and more. Now, if I go back to CloudWatch and resume it. Over here, you can see uh, the same are generated from, so just one level, which is coming from my any point, uh, error level, and then which is again, say, info level. So these are logs are coming directly from my any point local to AWS CloudWatch. Uh, that was pretty much it for the, uh, for the local configurations. Now, coming to uh, Cloud Hub. So, when you deploy it on uh, Cloud Hub on any point platform, uh, these configurations are not these are not supported by MuleSoft. As in, uh, you won't have if if you have any issues during configurations, MuleSoft won't be responsible for it. <coughs> you need to reach out. Uh, you need to figure it on your own since this is the external to MuleSoft. These applications or log4j2 file uh, to make sure that uh, this will work in your Cloud Hub. You need to raise a ticket to yourself saying to disable the cloud of logs. Okay. Uh, um, yeah. So in runtime for every application. So when you deploy your runtime, so uh, the first thing is uh, I passed it as a runtime argument, arguments, but in Cloud, you need to pass as a properties. 
okay, runtime properties and also apart from this uh, you need to have your uh, this button okay disable cloud of logs so by default if you add your uh, if you deploy this jar to uh, cloud of uh, your log for to file the configured one won't be considered because you have not uh, told mules of that you are using the uh, external configurations so you need to get it enabled this button disable cloud of logs uh, in that case only your uh, external configurations will be used okay uh, yeah, that's that's from uh, any point perspective on the cloud app. So uh, this is currently local. Yeah, maybe Santosh, you can uh, share that uh, link in the chat so that people can go through this document. Yeah. Also, the cloud, the cloud was appender which you have shared in the log J folder, like what you've shown that also you can paste so that people will know. Okay what appenders we need to use when we do that uh, on the on the link itself it's mentioned everything so. okay okay fine that's fine any questions so far or yeah i have i've given my access to people so the point is like uh, the way we use splunk or any other tool uh, for logging the same way we can use cloudwatch also so to do that configuration, you need to make some changes in your log uh, log 4 j 2 file in your uh, in your API, and then you need to use a dependency in the form. So Santos, is that dependency also there in the document which you have shared? Everything is over there. Yes. Okay. Yes, everything is on the. Yes. Yeah. So this this two things you need to do on API perspective, like uh, adding a dependency and then changing your log 4 j 2 file to connect with cloud uh, cloudwatch second thing is uh, that the aws cloudwatch uh, what you have you need to have a key and secret over there and you need to decide a reason where you need to create your stream and your logs uh, over there okay so because uh, that will be passed as a property when you uh, when you deploy your api over cloud and the third thing is you need to disable the cloud logs in the anypoint platform so once you do that, then only you, the logs will be visible in the CloudWatch, otherwise it won't. So for that, like you need to request Mulesoft to disable that uh, directly. You cannot do that. You need to take some permission from them. So you need to raise some tickets for that. And once that is done, uh, it will be disabled. Also, uh, this was from CloudWatch perspective. Apart from this, there may be a business requirement that you need a, a different layout. Uh, I do have a tag which is for JSON layout. If I can configure it now. So I'll just redeploy it and then see then the cloud was what comes yeah. in. Maybe you can also show like uh, the console when you deploy what all things you get in the console uh, which which uh, which verifies like uh, your cloud edge is connected with your API. Can you show that as well? Yep, sure. Santosh, you are unmuted. Santosh, you are unmuted if you speak. Okay, that's, that's automatically on I don't know why. Uh, I'm audible now, right? You are audible, you are audible. So uh, just to show you uh, the logs on the deployment, uh, usually uh, 
these are the logs. I mean, if you see on the this framework, this is throwing the logs, which says creating client via SDK builder, uh, default credentials provider, and existing log group, which is any point test and any point stream. Now, uh, usually what we uh, what what I did is I created the log group and then uh, added the log group and log stream over here, but uh, you can have your variables over here to create it during the runtime. Uh, that not that's not a best practice because uh, your client will be providing you the client ID and secret uh, that will be passed as a runtime. But uh, there won't be much permissions to create log group and log stream. So uh, make sure it is created first via the console, and then you are trying to access it through any of the uh, access key and secret access key of the uh, client. Okay. So this is not deployed. I'll try to enter it. Okay, so now uh, usually they were plain text. Uh, the pattern pattern was different. Now I can see there is a, a JSON layout pattern. Okay, this is these are the just uh, uh, client requirements. They might they might ask. Okay, they might need a JSON. They might HTML or XML according to their systems. They want to keep the consistency. Uh, second thing is I do have one more tag which says uh, threshold filter. So this basically says that uh, if there is an error, then only it will be posted in your uh, So this also needs to be added as a tag on the offender itself, which is like uh, if it's an error on my accept or else on mismatch denied. So only error level error level logs will be posted in CloudWatch. Uh, okay, again these are uh, not not uh, required required, but these are optional. Okay, might depends on business scenarios. Shantosh, can you reshare these tags in the chat again so that it will be easily uh, accessible? To yeah, people? these are these are not on. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. So one is threshold filter, and then second one is JSON layout. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, any questions? Yeah, so any question, guys? 